Hi, finally I finished the necessary code changes and uploaded my two apps to Google Play Store for download as I promised. This video is the last part of the how to make your Hexapod series and I'm going to show you how to configure the servo controller boards and how to install and set up the apps. By the end of this video you should be able to build a complete working Hexapod similar to the one I have here. Let's get it started. First, let me give you a quick overview. This is my Hexapod robot, which is being controlled by an Android phone. Basically, I wrote an app that controls the 18 servos and reads the sensor data via a servo controller board. All the control code is on the phone, and I'm only using the servo controller board as a simple port extension. The remote control is another app that runs on a second phone. The two phones connect over Wi-Fi using TCP IP. So I named the app on the main phone Chica server and the one on the remote control Chica client. I can confidently tell you that this is the most advanced Hexapod driver software that you can find online, free or paid. It is available on Google Play Store for free for all Hexapod enthusiasts, and it will always stay free. The first step is to set up the servo controller boards. You need a minimum of 18 channels for the 18 servos. On top of that, I have six input channels for the six touch sensors, two input channels for voltage and current input, and one output channel for the main power switch. Unfortunately, the biggest board from Pololu only has 24 channels, so I had to use a second board to add more channels. Let's call these the primary and the secondary boards. You can use any combination of Pololu servo controller boards, and only the servo channels are mandatory. Here you can see how I split the channels between the two boards. To configure the boards, I'm using the Pololu Control Center application that you can get from Pololu's website. In the Channel Settings tab, you can set each channel to be a servo, an input, or an output. For example, I have set all the channels on the primary board to servos. Make sure to adjust the min and max values to get the maximum range of movement for each servo. On the secondary board, I have set each channel as an input or output based on my configuration. In the Serial Settings tab, select the Dual Port Mode for the primary board. And on the secondary board, select the Fixed Baud Rate option with this exact value. Also make sure to set different device numbers for the two boards. The next step is to install and set up the apps. Install the Chica server app on the main phone. Make sure to use the double quotation marks to search for the exact name on Play Store. Do not connect the phone to the robot yet. Open the app and click on the config button to open the settings page. Here you can set all the channels and related calibration data. If you have followed my exact channel configuration, you can keep everything as is and you only need to update the calibration values that you measured previously. There is also some configurations for Hexapod geometry, so you can use this app to drive your custom-made Hexapod robot as well, which I think is pretty cool. I won't go into the details of the config format here, because I think it is pretty self-explaining. You can edit the config directly in the app, or edit it on the computer in a text file, and just paste the final config into the app, as I do here. Make sure to save the config and double check to verify that the changes are accepted. Then exit the app. Now connect the phone to the robot and accept the prompt to give permission to the app to open this USB device by default. If everything goes as planned, you should see the self-initialization sequence. Check the touch sensors and voltage and current readings to make sure they work as expected. You can also block and unblock the robot to inspect the servo movements. Now install the Chica client app on the remote controller phone. Make sure that the two phones are connected to the same Wi-Fi network. You can also create a hotspot on one of the phones and connect through that, which is useful when there are no Wi-Fi networks around. Open the client app and go to the settings tab. Here you should enter the IP address of the main phone. I display the IP on the main app. You can also find the IP from the phone's status info. 
enter the IP and save the changes. The client app will scan these IPs and it should connect in a few seconds. Once it is connected, you should see the robot status under remote control. Well, that was it. Now you can try all the different movements of walking gates that are available under remote control. My plan is to update these apps with bug fixes and new features over the coming months and years and help as many of you as I can to build your own hexapods using these apps. So make sure to reach out if you need help or you hit a bug in the apps. Also, if you like these projects, make sure to tell your friends and coworkers about it. And the faster we can grow this channel, the sooner I will be able to take on new interesting projects. This concludes the How to Make Your Hexapod series. See you in the next video, and thank you for watching.